So knowing how to keep track of your bills and payments is an important part of managing your finances. And this is simply because late fees can cause interest and it can also impact your credit score. So it's really important that you have a plan to keep track of your bills and payments and make those payments on time. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I would love to know how you currently keep track of your own bills and payments. Share in the comments below and hopefully in this video you can get some ideas to improve or start keeping track of those bills and payments that you have to make. Hey everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance, and I'm also the author of the Clever Girl Finance book series and the new book, Choosing to Prosper. Welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the best way to keep track of your bills and payments. So let's dive in. So to get organized with your bills and payments, the first thing you want to do is create a list of all your bills and payments. And this is simply keeping track, making a list of all the bills that you pay for, not just monthly, but also quarterly and annually. Those quarterly and annual bills are easy to forget because we're not paying them on a recurring basis every single month, but you want to make sure that you keep track of them and you include them in your list. You may also have some irregular bills that you pay every now and then. You also want to make sure that you include those in your list. So examples of bills that you might be paying on a monthly, quarterly, yearly, or irregular basis would include bills like your rent or your mortgage, homeowners association fee, cell phone bills, internet bills, cable bills, electricity, water and sewage, credit card bills, student loans and other debts, subscriptions and memberships, a car payment, uh, life insurance premiums, which could be monthly or annually, car insurance, which could also be monthly or annually, homeowners or renters insurance, which again could be monthly or annually, and then property taxes, which could also be monthly or annually. Number two, you want to add your bills to your calendar. So you can use your smartphone or your computer, your iPad, or even an actual physical calendar where you note the date of the month where you're making every bill payment. And then if you have a quarterly bill or an annual bill, you put that payment or that bill on the month that that bill is going to be due. This way you can easily keep track of those bills and payments. And then if you're using a device for your calendar, then set reminders for a week before or a few days before so that you know that bill is coming up and you can do a quick budget check to make sure that you have the funds there to accommodate making that payment. Number three, I just talked about, but again, set reminders to pay those bills, set notifications, set alarms so that you know when you need to pay a bill and be mindful of how long it takes for uh, the payment to clear, which means that you, you might want to make that payment a few days before it is actually due so that it has enough time to clear and you don't get charged any fees uh, depending on who your service or bill provider is because some of them can be finicky if the bill is not paid by the exact date. Number four, put your bills on auto pay if you're able to. So this is a fail proof way to make sure that you're able to pay your bills on time every single time. You can automate your bill payments, right? They come out of a certain account on a certain date and you don't have to worry about them. However, you need to make sure that you have that amount of money in the account by the date that that bill is due. So what a lot of people do is they have a designated, uh, what a lot of people do who automate their bill payments is that they have a designated account specifically just for bills and they have a portion of their paycheck deposited into that account so that they're always able to cover those automated bills. Number five, you want to create a bill organization system. And this is because it can be overwhelming if you have so many different bills and payments and they're all over the place and they're due on all these different different dates. So what you can do is organize your bills into a digital folder where you have it organized by either weeks in the month or uh, days of the month so then you know what bills are coming due. You can switch from paper to email statement so that you can you can put all of these statements of bills due in a specific folder, or you can also have a dedicated email account where all your bills, your e-bill statements go so that you can always access that account and see 
those statements that have been sent to you and when that bill is due. If you are very overwhelmed by all your different due dates, one thing you can do depending on your provider, your bill provider, is that you can call them and ask them to move your bill due date. Many providers will do this, especially when it comes to credit card companies, cell phone companies, etc., even insurance companies, as long as you're not moving the date beyond 30 days. So if you're moving a date from the 2nd to the 15th, many of them will accommodate it. So what you can do is move your dates around uh, when you're going to get paid so that you pay your bills as you're getting paid and you do them all at once as opposed to having so many different bills coming through on so many different days and overwhelming yourself. Number six, another thing you can do is use a paycheck budget. So for example, let's say you get paid two times a month or bi-weekly, right? What you can do is designate one paycheck towards paying bills or split the bills between your two different paychecks or the number of paychecks you get paid either bi-weekly, weekly, et cetera. And so this allows you to organize your bills in groups so that when you get paid the beginning of the month, you pay these amount of bills. And then when you get paid in the middle of the month, you pay these amount of bills. And then when you get paid at the end of the month, depending on your bill, on your paycheck schedule, you pay your last set of bills. So consider creating a paycheck schedule where you can plan your bills and time them with when you're getting paid um, and designate that paycheck for certain bills. That is certainly helpful. By the way, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your best girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance, and then stop by the Clever Girl Finance website. We have over 30 plus completely free courses to help you on your journey to financial wellness. We also have over 40 plus completely free worksheets and we update our blog every single day. Okay, let's get back to the video. So there is no one right way to keep track of your bills. The most important thing is that you're making those bill payments on time. But I wanted to share a few ideas to help you with you know, how you can keep track of your bills, especially if you don't have a system in place or the system you currently have is not working well for you. So some ways that you can keep track of your bills and payments include spreadsheets, right? Number one, spreadsheets. Uh, you can open up a Google Sheets or use an Excel file and make a list of all your bills, every single one of the bills that you have to pay and their due dates and, and organize them by first through 31st of the month. The great thing about using a digital spreadsheet like Google Sheets is that you can also access it from your smartphone on the go. Another thing you can use to track your bill payments is budgeting and money managing apps. A lot of these apps have sections where you can put in your bills and their due dates and even set reminders within the app. So that is certainly something that you can explore by visiting the uh, app store on your smartphone and searching for bill management or a budgeting tool and making sure that that budgeting tool has a bill management uh, functionality built into it. Number three, you can use a transaction register. Uh, depending on how old you are, you may or may not know what a transaction register is, but it was typically this little small like notebook tracker that is included with a checkbook. And while many people do not use this anymore for checks, you can actually use a little transaction register to track your bill. So it's basically the equivalent of having a small notebook and you just write down all the bills that you have, right? And then every month when you pay a bill, you just check it off that that bill was paid for that month. And it could be a little small notebook that you keep in your handbag or on your tabletop, but that is a way that works for some people, especially people who like to write things down. An alternative to a transaction register is printing out expense tracking uh, spreadsheets or worksheets rather. And this is just basically a piece of paper where again, you list out all your bills and you're able to check off every time you make a bill payment for each month that that bill is due. By the way, we have over 40 plus completely free worksheets on Clever Girl Finance. And these also include budgeting and expense tracking worksheets. So head on over to our website to get those worksheets sheets as well. Number five, you may choose to use a hybrid approach. So you may decide to use a spreadsheet and an app and maybe a notebook while you're on the go. I use a hybrid approach for tracking my bills and payments. I use a spreadsheet and I also use an app on my phone and I also use the notes on my phone uh, instead of an actual transaction register to jot down uh, bill payments that I want to make early. So you have to find an approach that works for you, but leveraging one or a combined, a combination of these things I've mentioned can help you ensure that you're always on top of your bill payments. The other thing I do is I leverage a calendar to set all my reminders of when bills are due as well. So you want to be able to track when those bills have actually be paid, been paid, right? So you can do them, number one, when the expense has happened. So basically you log into your bank account, you log into your budgeting app and you confirm that that bill has been paid and you check it off for that month in your budget or in your transaction register. Number two, at the end of the day, if 
if you have bills spread across multiple different days, you can just simply log into your bank account, see what bills have been paid for that day, and then check them off in your budget. Number three, you can do it once per week during your budgeting time. So I strongly recommend that you check your budget at least once a week. And if you are a weekly budget check in person, what you can do is log into your account at the end of the week, see what bills have been paid, confirm that the right amounts have gone through, and then again, check them off in your budget. So those are the three different times that you can check in to ensure that those bills and payments have gone through as you expect them when that expense happens at the end of the day or at the end of the week. Managing your finances does not have to be hard and tracking your bills and payments does not have to be complicated. And you wanna make sure that you create a system that works for you so that you don't have to worry about late fees, paying bills late, the impact to your credit and et cetera. So you want to have the system in place so that you can track your bills according to your budget and then focus on the rest of your financial planning. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to know how you currently track your bills and payments. So leave a comment below. And if you have loved this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your best girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance and stop by our website, clevergirlfinance.com. You will find our over 40 plus worksheets, which I mentioned in this video. We have over 30 plus courses. We have a blog that gets updated every single day and check out the Clever Girls Know podcast. We have an awesome podcast that I host with so many amazing guests and I would love for you to tune into that too. Thank you for being here and I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.